Welcome to this presentation on some new archaeological evidence from Roman Bath. As you will see, this talk is mainly concerned with the time after the occupying army has moved on to occupy other parts of Britain. What I will be talking about is based on the finds assemblage from an excavation by Context 1 Heritage and Archaeology in 2012. Following a brief introduction into the location, I will give a quick overview of the assemblage followed by a number of notable finds for which the sites provide important dating evidence, sometimes the first good date, before looking into slightly more detail at the evidence for activity related to military or ex-military personnel reflected in the site assemblage. As you know, Bath is in the southwest of the province. The site is located in Bathwick, on the floodplain to the east of the River Avon at the junction of Bathwick Street and Henrietta Road. To make it clear straight away, there is no evidence of any fort or military installation in the post-conquest period. Small-scale ephemeral activity is confined to the southeastern part of the site in the post-conquest period, while the northwestern part was prone to frequent flooding, essentially continuing the situation in the preceding pre-Roman phase. The main activity on the site started with the construction of the road around AD 80, a side street leading onto Bathwick Street. The occupation either side of the road appears to have consisted of a domestic um, activity with a possible taberna with an outside seating area beyond an arcade on the northwestern side and another activity area on the southeast side similarly geared to the production of food and drink, including malting and brewing. There is also ample evidence for the consumption and sale of more exotic goods, including olive oil, wine, fruit, capers and most likely herbs, spices, perfumes and ointments. By the end of the first decade of the 2nd century, the road fell out of use and the subsequent level of activity is much reduced. Evidence from the neighbouring site at Gibbs Garage, which with a mortared stone building fronting Bathwick Street, and elsewhere in Bathwick suggests that the bustling taberna made way for a more urban street scene, perhaps reflecting the success of Aquisulis and the demand for housing within an easy reach of the pleasures of offered by the temple and baths. The assemblage was excavated from 238 contexts. It comprises 984 objects made of various metals or metal alloys, worked bone, shale, slate and stone. The periods of interest here are periods 2 to 8, covering the Roman period. The discrepancy between the figures in rows with brackets is mainly attributable to the large number of fragmented iron nails. 320 records, 835 by fragment count. As you can see, the majority of the Roman finds come from period 3 which covers about 35 years during the later Flavian to Trianic periods. Of the personal objects, I just wanted to highlight two pins because they are unusual and provide important dating evidence. I will also mention two of the 17 brooches when I come to the military evidence. Here you see the most ornate pin from the site. Its cast copper alloy head is sculpted in the shape of probably a small dog above a four-lobed calyx. Its mouth is wide open, its tail curled up tightly and it is wearing a corbel chain round the neck with a square extension at the throat, possibly a bell. Of course any dog owner will know this pose as an invitation to play. Only the upper part of the iron shaft remains. The closest comparisons so far can be found among pins of Riha type 1231 from Augs in Switzerland and other sites in the Rhineland including Nijmegen in the Netherlands with a context date of 8075 to 150 and Longray in France, but also one from London. Considering the paucity of close dating evidence of the comparisons mentioned here, the Bathwick pin is of considerable significance as it comes from a pit dating between AD 140 and 200. This attractive pin was found in a layer dating to the mid to later 2nd century. I don't know of any exact comparison, although otherwise plain pins with spherical heads above one or two cordons are known regionally from Ilchester and further afield from Coptol Court in London. 
Individual elements of the decoration can, of course, be found among various types of Roman bone pins. However, the closest comparison to be, uh, seems to be a pin with slightly swollen shaft from a 10th century context at 16 to 22 Copper Gate in York. Given that the Bathwick pin comes from a mid to later 2nd century context, its similarity to the late Saxon pin from York might be nothing more than coincidence. These two unstratified fragments no longer join due to corrosion, but they can be identified as a double looped handle for a mirror of Lloyd Morgan type K or L. The fragment of a possible mirror disc with a reconstructed diameter of 120 mm, recovered from a medieval context, is commensurate with such mirrors which date to the 1st and early 2nd century AD. This bone object could easily be mistaken for a pin, but it is extremely rare to find bone pins with its incised spirally wound lines. It is more likely a ring distaff. Here are two examples from Xanten. Stephen Grieb informs me that so far no ring distaffs made of bone have been found in Britain. The incised diagonal line winding around the shaft is an important detail which helps to confirm the interpretation as a distaff, as this feature basically imitates glass distaffs where the shaft always appears to be twisted. The presence in the bath assemblage of the hairpins, at least one mirror, and the ring distaff are interesting indicators for the presence of women at the site. As is befitting for a taverna, there are two bone counters and there are a further nine from the uh, glass assemblage uh, from the site. There is of course evidence for soldiers uh, from other sites in Bath, like these two gravestones shown here. And a small number of finds are known from various sites, for instance at Nelson Place in Walcott. In terms of small finds, however, none has yet produced the quantity and uh, range as this site. A period 2 pin contained a wire brooch featuring the Laten 2 brooch construction. On account of the cross-ribbed clip, the brooch belongs to Fergere type 3B 1B and Macrath type military Laten 2 6A. In Britain, the type is found almost exclusively on Roman sites, frequently with military associations, and the distribution of the variant with decorated collar is mainly in the southeast and the Severn estuary. Typologically, the brooches are a chronological anachronism. The French examples do not occur before the late Augustan period and essentially span the reigns of Tiberius to Vespasian with the flow rate in the Claudian period, although some have been recovered from 2nd century contexts. While there is only one example with direct dating evidence uh, for the military Latin type 26A in Britain from a context dated before AD 200 from Richborough and Kent, the variant with undecorated clip is mainly Neronian to Flavian. The Bathwick example provides an important date for the decorated variant covering the Claudian to early Flavian periods. Six hot hill type brooches were recovered, but here I just want to draw your attention to a rather badly preserved example. The brooch can be identified as Riha type 510 or Macrath hot hill 10E. The distribution of the series in Britain is still predominantly to the southeast of the Fosway. The marked increase in the number of Hot Hill brooches following the conquest supports the view of their association with the army, although on an individual basis this will be difficult to prove and there are Hot Hill brooches worn by women. I've uh, described one uh, example from West Thurrock in Essex. For the Bathwick site, it is interesting to note that Macrath contemplates the faint possibility that the large number of Hod Hill 10 brooches in Gloucestershire might be related to military presence in the land of the Borduni right at the start of the conquest. Five iron strips from the site are tentatively identified as belonging to segmental armour, also known as Lorica segmentata, although that is not um, a contemporary um, description. Apart from one unstratified strip, the remainder comes from period 3 contexts dating to between um, circa AD 80 and 110. Two strip fragments, which probably belong to the same item, found in a pit fill of the early 2nd century, have one long straight rounded edge which is slightly turned out. A detail commonly found on outer strips or plates, seen on the right on an example of a breastplate from the Zugmantel fort in Germany. 
While the strip on the left has no obvious holes discernible in the X-ray graph, the one on the right has one hole near one end with a curved corner. Compare two arm guard fragments from the Waffenmagazin at Carnuntum in Austria and uh, some from Newstead. The presence of segmental armor is indicative of a legionary rather than auxiliary presence at the site. A copper alloy girth hoop tie ring was among the finds from a surface layer of the first road in period 3 middle. Such rings belong to new step type Loica segmentata. Finds of such armor are predominantly dated to the second uh, or first half of the third century. And while it used to be considered an Antonine modification of earlier curious types, there is now scant evidence for a slightly earlier introduction. Mark Bishops informs me that recent finds from Sami Segetusa in Romania of Hadrianic date and Carlisle of Trianic date had already pushed this date forward to the beginning of the second century. But based on the discovery of the ring in uh, the road in Bathwick, constructed soon after AD 80, an earlier Domitianic date can now be assumed for the introduction of this type of armor. It is thus one of, if not the earliest record for this type of armor. A very ornate trifoliate horse harness fitting comes from early 2nd century occupation layers uh, in Bathwick. The surface of the fitting's outer leaves is decorated with rows of dots. While there is now no uh, longer any sign of any surface coating, such fittings were commonly silvered rather than tinned, and the dots, which are likely to be yellow, would have created a striking black contrast to the silver-colored base. Although the shape of the fitting is similar to Neronian Flavian pendants of bishops types 1C, E, S and V, these have a suspension hinge or loop for the attachment to a phalera. No such suspension hinge seems to have been part of this piece. I know of only two closely comparable fittings. A harness mount from a 2nd century context at Gorhambury in St. Albans and one from pit 124 at Richborough for which Bush Fox gives a date of AD 65 to 80, but according to recent research by Phil Smither, probably after AD 50. These two fittings present the only exact parallels for the attachment. The pattern of lobes and vines is very similar, but evidently not out of the same mold. Apart from these three mounts, no other fittings of this form are known with this exact type of uh, attachment at present, but there is one uh, from Nijmegen where there's um, a rivet fitting at one of the lobes at the back. There are other finds indicative of cavalry connections like these two strap terminals. And there's also a much corroded spearhead and an arrowhead. The proportion of military equipment at the site is high for Bath, but also other British towns, 16 items. If we accept Bishop's premise, that the presence of Roman military equipment on a site almost invariably points to the presence of the army, since the more equipment found at any given site, the more likely it becomes that a military presence must be acknowledged, then the site at Bathwick Street and Henrietta Road is a prime contender for such a presence. In light of this presumed military presence, it is perhaps worth mentioning that the assemblage of brooches recovered from the site could effortlessly augment the material evidence for this presence, because most of the individual variants of the types represented have been linked with the army in one way or another, although it will of course not be possible to prove this for every individual object. The considerable body of evidence calls for an explanation, especially because within the context of Roman Bath it represents the largest assemblage of military equipment to date. In a discussion in 1991 of soldiers and military equipment in the towns of Roman Britain, Bishop examined the role, the role uh, dispersed garrison uh, or billeting by the military might have played in the distribution of military objects in towns. He excluded certain sites like London, Corbridge and Carlisle from his consideration because of their known association with the army and the presence of military compounds or forts within their confines. And he would have excluded Bath with its spa patronized by the army from his considerations as well, had it uh, produced vast amounts of relevant published material. At that time, this was not the case, but the situation has now changed with the discovery of the many military objects from this site. 
Evidence for a military presence in Bath includes the large proportion of flagons in early Roman pottery assemblages from elsewhere in the city, and their subsequent decrease during the later Roman period, which has been considered indicative of a military origin for the town. The representative buildings at Bath Spa is taken as a possible evidence for an administrative military presence in the mid-late 1st century. The presence of military men and probably some uh, sort of army administration is also suggested by inscriptions referring to a Centurio Regionarius and, from Coombe Down, a Principia, an official headquarters, whether military or civilian is uncertain, although evidence for its existence an ex inscription mentioning its restoration appears to date to the reign of Elagabalus, who reigned between 218 and 222, which means that the bu this building might thus uh, relate to a later phase than the main occupation at Bathwick Street and Henrietta Road. The location of a fort might well be signposted by finds and features excavated at the Hatton Feather and Nelson Place sites on the northern side of the Avon in Walcott. They are indicative of uh, first and second century predominantly civilian occupation with a reasonably high living standard. Underlying the main early second uh, century phase of a building at Nelson Place were leveling deposits containing finds more reminiscent of military sites, including a fragment of segmental armour, a buckle and a strap end. The area south of London Road and south of Cle Cleveland Bridge has in the past been suggested as the site of a conquest period fort, although other suggestions for its location include Barthwick to the south of the river. Importantly, the assemblage dates not to the immediate aftermath of the conquest when a military fort is likely to have existed in Bath, but it is chron chronologically later in the main Domitianic to Trianic. It is therefore doubtful whether the military assemblage from this site relates to the clearing to be expected on the abandonment of a fort. Alternatively, it could be evidence for billeting of army detachments in a civilian environment, or maybe, especially when considering the rather informal buildings uncovered at the site, it might have served as a stopover for refreshments for trips transporting material between the Coombe Down quarries and the building sites in the city or maybe even transportation of goods from uh, the pool harbour up the pool road. The refreshments could well have been provided by a veteran earning a living in his second career. You can hopefully soon read all about it in much more detail. Thank you for listening.